Sorry, Amos, that music say good health to all from Rexall, the stores with the orange and blue sign. Yes, 10,000 independent Rexall druggists at the stores with the orange and blue sign bring you the Amos and Andy Show, written by Joe Connolly and Bob Mosier, featuring Ernestine Wade, Johnny Lee, Amanda Randolph, Tommy Moore, Leo Cleary, Corny Anderson, Roy Glenn, Jeff Alexander's music, yours truly, Harlow Wilcox, and starring radio's all-time favorites, Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll, Amos and Andy! <laughs> How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I am Freeman Gosden. In a few minutes, you're going to hear about one of the most important money-saving ads of all times. It's the big four-page ad on Rexall's one-cent sale that starts in October the 14th. And it appears in this week's Life, Look Colliers, and the Coming Farm Journal. Believe me, you'll save money on your drug needs for months to come. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and I am Charles Carell. And I suggest that you listen carefully when your Rexall family druggist tells you more about the one-cent sale ad. Well, about three months ago, the Kingfish and his wife, Sapphire, received news that Uncle Mortimer had passed on. They've anxiously been waiting word from the estate... And finally, today, they received a bulky envelope in the mail from the lawyers who handled Uncle Mortimer's will. Oh, Mama, look how heavy and bulky the envelope is. Yes, daughter. There certainly must be something in there. (laughs) Yeah. When it comes to padding, I hope you're padding the thing with checks and not a lot of them legal documents. We know that old old Mortimer's gone, but we don't need a lot of carbon copies to tell us about it. (laughs) Uncle Mortimer was well off. And I just know he remembered us in a generous way. Well, I wouldn't count on that, Mama. That was a pretty expensive going away party to give the old boy. When we got back from the planting, why, there was quite a buffet supper they had there. <laughs> Two hams, three, four chickens, a great big turkey, all them horses' herbs there, and a big bowl of punch we had. I tell you, we could have paid our respects just as well on Spam and peanut butter. Hurry up, Sapphire. Open it up and see what it says. Yeah, open the thing there. What is it in there? Look, look, look in there now. What is it? <coughs> yeah, well, read it, Sapphire. <laughs> Don't keep us here in a state of suspended imitation here. <laughs> George, it's a check for five. Hundred dollars is made out to you and me and Mama. Oh, how wonderful! And George, we'll put this right in the bank for our emergency fund. Now wait a minute, you wait a minute now. Look here, that ain't no way to do it. We gonna put this money to work for us. Invest it in some profitable and ludicrous business. <laughs> what do you mean, George? Look here, Baldy. You keep your cab- <laughs> just keep your cabbage hooks off the sand. <laughs> Now, listen, I know this money was coming for some time, and I done made a deal with Andy. We agreed that as soon as I got it, he would put up dollar for dollar with me, and we was going in business together. Well, what are you two bums planning to do? Corner the ignorant market? Now, wait a minute, sir. That's the whole trouble around here. Don't want no, nobody have no faith in me. The two of you going around here saying I is no good. Mm. All I get is disparaging remarks. I need someone to disparage in my favor around here. I don't care, George. We ain't turning this money over to you to go in business with Andy Brown. Is we, Mama? Well, on the contrary, daughter, we is. What? Providing he finds some legitimate business, we'll let him have the money. Oh, Mama, you is wonderful. But, Mama! Sapphire, I'm tired of him yapping around here. He ain't got no opportunity. This time, we'll let him have the money. But if he loses it out, he goes bag and baggage. You understand that? Mm, yes, Mama, yes, Mama. <laughs> Come on, Sapphire, we'll start break. Hmm. She gonna let me have the money. I just can't believe something that sweet could cut him from something that sour. <laughs> I 
I feel like a hog that found a papaya in a bucket of swill. <laughs> Kingfish, now that Sapphire and her mama done turned that $500 over to you, have you figured out any good business for us to get into? Well, then, I want to be careful. If I lose that money this time, I'm going to find myself three miles up a half-mile creek. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This time, you got to find some legitimate business. Nothing that's underhanded or sub Rosalie. Uh, what is you reading there, Kingfish? Well, uh, this morning, I clipped the business opportunities out of the paper here. I think we could look them over here. Here it is, right there. Yeah. Look there. There was a lot of them there, ain't they? Yeah, listen to this one. Be independent for life. Raise chinchillas in your own home. Hmm, that don't sound bad. No, no. I tried raising chinchillas once. But with the money I had, I was only able to buy one chinchilla. <laughs> Only one? Yeah, and I was saving up to buy another one when the little rascal got tired of waiting and he eloped with the cat from down the street. <laughs> uh, we better stay away from animals, I guess, yeah. Yeah, that's all good. Hey, how about this one here? This sounds great. Come to sunny California. No experience, good salary, easy work in pleasant surroundings. Mm, no, that ass in there all the time, man. That ain't no good neither. Friend of mine done answered that thing. He packed up his whole family and went to California. Job turned out to be trampling grapes in some place they call Azusa or something like that. Uh, didn't like it, huh? Oh, he liked it all right. He was doing pretty well till one day his seats gave out on him in a vat of muscatel. <laughs> well, that's no good, no. Yeah, he had red seats for years. That's right. Can't get it off. Say, here's something that looks legitimate. Cloakroom concession for sale. I apply Mr. Hathaway, Silver Slipper Nightclub, $1,000. Mr. Hathaway is so wonderful. Yeah, that's the new nightclub over on the boulevard. They are doing a big business. A uh, fellow can make himself a fortune checking coats over there, you know it? Yeah, but that's an awful lot of money, and I don't know about that night work and late hours and all that stuff. Yeah, maybe you're right, ain't it? The silver slipper's always jammed. We might have to work too hard over there. Noisy place, too. That's the place that has all them young cuties in the chorus, dancing around, kicking their legs up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what you looking for, Andrew? My hat. Let's get going. Yeah. We just had this check room here at the Silver Slipper now for three days. We ain't doing bad, you know it. Oh, yes, great. We must have a hundred coats that was checked in here tonight. Look at that. We got the hangers filled clear from number one to number 103. Yeah, well, then, it's about supper time. One of us ought to go and eat. You go ahead first, Anna. I'll watch the check stand. Okay, Kingfish. But don't forget now, be sure and give everybody a check. Oh, don't worry. And don't give nobody a coat without the right check. Oh, what do you think I is, Andy? A nincompoodle or something? <laughs> well, so long, Kingfish. I'll be back in about a half hour. So yeah. Long. Well, while they're gone, I might as well pocket the tips. Ain't no use carrying this 50-50 thing too extreme. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, but I wonder if I can have my coat. Uh, certainly, miss. Uh, uh, you got your claim check? Well, um, no, I haven't. I must have misplaced the silly old check at the table. But I see it hanging right there. It's that silly old mink coat on hook 19. The full-length mink with the round collar. Uh, sorry, miss. I I know she want the silly old mink coat, but... <laughs> By any chance, does you have the silly old check? <laughs> mm, well, what am I going to do? I, I'm in an awful hurry, and it's 11.30, and I promised my mama I'd be home at 11. Mama will be so worried. Well, I saw her, but it's against the rules and regulations. Couldn't you make uh, an exception? I'm sure you wouldn't want me to freeze to death on the way home. Just look how flimsy this gown is. Mm, yeah, I was noticing that. Yeah. 
<laughs> but, uh, like I say, it's against the rules and regulations. But, uh, couldn't you just make an exception for me? You look like such a sweet, handsome, understanding boy. Boy? <laughs> well, so much for the rules and regulations. Which one is your coat your short <laughs> My coat is that full-length mink with a round collar on hook number 19. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right. There you is, nurse. Say, that sure was a expensive-looking mink. Uh, where you get that? Oh, my sweet old mama bought it for me someplace. Yeah. Uh, before I go, I, um, I wonder if you could do me one more favor. Uh, what is that? Uh, do you know if there's a pawn shop open in the neighborhood? <laughs> No, uh, not at this time of night. Well, thanks anyway. You've been so sweet. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <clears throat> I wonder what she wants with a pawn shop. Oh, she probably wants to take a mandolin home to her dear sweet old mama. That's what... <laughs> Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist with the money-saving news Mr. Carell promised I'd have. This week's issue of Life, Look, Colliers, and the Coming Farm Journal carry a four-page advertisement on Rexall's famous one-cent sale that starts October 14th. In this ad, you'll find exactly 187 items, every one of them a top-quality, guaranteed Rexall product. Every one of them offered at two for the price of one, plus a penny. On top of that, there are 34 super specials. Bonus bargains, priced so low you'll hardly believe your eyes. Seventy-two of the items in this advertisement are illustrated. All of them are so clearly described that you can actually use this ad as a shopping list. So remember, check the Rexall one-cent sale ad in this week's Life, Look, Collier's, and the coming Farm Journal. Well, I'm back, Kingfish. Took a half hour for supper. Everything going all right? No, I've been kind of quiet, Andy. Yeah, how is the chips coming along? Well, you know that big spender from out of town that was eating the caviar and drinking the champagne? Yeah. Him and his party left. Oh, boy, he must have given you a big tip. Yeah, well, I got down seven coats and three hats, and then I held out my hand. Yeah? He ground out a cigar in my palm. <laughs> well, well, that's better than that Texas oil man to give us the greasy suspender button. Well, uh, the other side of him and the uh, gal that come out for the mink coat has been pretty quiet. I guess that, uh... I'd like to have my wife's coat, please. Uh, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Could I have your check, please, sir? Mm, there you are. Uh, one coat, Andy, hook 19. Oh, yeah, one coat, hook 19. <laughs> Yeah, uh, enjoy the show, mister? Yes, but I have to leave. I have an early appointment. Uh, say, mister, uh, been watching the World Series? Mm, a little. Yeah, the, the play I like was the other day. Uh, uh, Campanella got down on second. Okay. Uh, what is it? Ain't no code on number 19. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, uh, let me see the check here. Oh, I see, I got it upside down. <laughs> Correction. One coat, number 61. One coat, number 61. Uh, sorry, must I hold the check wrong with uh, uh Now, when Campanella uh, got down on second, Duke Snyder... Kingfish. Uh, yeah, then. Uh, Could I see you a minute? Uh, excuse me, mister. I'll be right back here. Uh, what's up, Anna? Look what's on hook 61. <laughs> yeah. If the man's wife wasn't wearing a gray fedora, we is in trouble. <laughs> must have misplaced it. Uh, uh, go look on hook uh, 91 in the next aisle. Yeah, yeah, 91 in the next aisle. Okay. Uh, sorry, mister, where was I? Uh, you still had Campanella stranded on second. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Duke Snyder come up. Uh, Say, uh, uh, did something happen to my wife's coat? Oh, no, sir, no, sir. We just uh, misplaced it here. Have it for you in just a, diffy, a jiffy here. Now, when uh, Campanella was down there on second... Oh, Kingfish. Uh, what is it? I looked in the other aisle... 
Uh, what's hanging on 91? A short man with a snoot full. That is all. Over. <laughs> now, see here. Have you lost my wife's fur coat? Uh, no, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir, mister. Now, look here. We, we, we just mixed up here. Have it for you in just a jiffy. Now, Campanella was down on second. I'm not a bit interested in what happened to Campanella on second. I want my wife's coat. Uh, well, maybe if you describe it, uh, what color cloth coat was it? It was not a cloth coat. It was a full-length mink coat with a round collar. Mmm, yeah. <laughs> now, see here. Just what have you done with that coat? Yeah, Kingfish, where's the man's coat? Well, now, listen, listen now, 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 wait a minute. Now, look here, listen here. A mistake has done been made. Now, that's the truth. Now, now we don't give the coat to the wrong party. You gave someone my wife's $1,500 mink coat? Well, now, it was just a mistake, mister. Now, look here, look, now, wait a minute. Now, if you come around here the first thing in the morning, we'll have it for you. Very well. But if that coat isn't here in the morning, I'm going to the police. Good night. Yes, sir, mister. Thank you. Yes, sir. Say, Kingfish, what did you do with the man's mink coat? Oh, Andy, while you was out to supper, this gal come up and give me a hard luck story about losing a check. Next thing I know, she done sweet talk me into believing it was her coat. Holy smoke, Kingfish. How could you have done something like that? Oh, Andy, I feels worse than you does about this. Letting the gal do this to me. I tell you, Andy, it's times like this that I wish Dr. Kinsey had never discovered the opposite sex. I tell you. <laughs> Kingfish, how in the world is we going to get back that mink coat that you done give away last night? Well, now, look, Andy, it ain't no use of getting excited. I done sent for Calhoun. He should have been here an hour ago. Maybe he'll have some way that we can... Uh... Well, here he is now. Where you been, Calhoun? Now, how you, boy? Got you as soon as I could. Well, Calhoun, what do you think about this mess? Kingfish giving a mink coat to a gal that turns out to be a crook. Well, that's the way it goes. Gals is always getting men's into trouble. Just like yesterday, I had to serve a summons to a chorus gal. A chorus gal? Yeah. You see, a client of mine is suing this gal, and I had to go up to her place and serve her with the people. Went up there and served her, huh? Yeah. When she opened the door and I tried to hand her the summons, she started making goo-goo eyes at me. So I told her, I said, honey, you ain't going to get no place with them kind of tactics. And then she got me to sit down on the sofa, and, and she held my hand... And then she put her arms around me and started kissing me. And then she kissed me some more. And then she kissed me some more. And the girl just kept on kissing me and kissing me. Yeah, well, uh, what did she do when you handed her the summons? Uh, what summons is that? Tell who? Yeah. About the mink coat. The fellow's going to the police if we don't do something by 10 o'clock tonight. Going to the police? Yeah. Well, then the thing you got to do is beat him to the punch. Yeah, well, how are we going to do that? Just explain that to me. Now, going now to... look. If the police find out you just give the coat away, then they're going to hold you responsible. But if you give the police a story that the coat was stolen in a big armed robbery, it wouldn't be your fault. Yeah, that's right, Calhoun. Yeah. Me and Annie can make up a big story about the coat being stolen in an armed robbery. Yeah. That we was beat up and everything. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. Yeah, that's right, Calhoun. And, and you, uh, and, and Andy, you can be the victim. Kim, huh? Yeah, you make a much more convincing victim than I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck to you, boy. Well, you want to thank you, Calhoun. That's a great piece of advice you give us there. You're really on your toes, boy. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> Man, a man got to be smart. For instance, I, I had a case last week. I had a real smart lawyer opposing me, too. And I figured out that the only way I could possibly win was if the other lawyer wasn't himself in the court the next day. So I worked out a scheme. Yeah, what'd you do, Calhoun? Well, the case was scheduled for 9 o'clock in the morning, so the night before, I got out of bed every 15 minutes and called the other lawyer on the phone. Yeah. And as soon as he answered, I hung up. You see, I knew that by doing that all night long, I'd keep him from sleeping, and he'd really be exhausted next morning in cold. Yeah, well, how did your kids come out, Calhoun? I don't know. I was so knocked out, I overslept. <laughs> now, 
listen to a lady and our Rexall family druggist. I'm dying to hear more about that ad on Rexall's one cent sale. Well, ma'am, it's four full pages in four magazines. This week's Life, Look, Colliers, and the Coming Farm Journal. And it features 187 guaranteed Rexall products. All of them at two for the price of one, plus a penny. What's more, there are 34 bonus bargains. Super specials at prices you can't afford to miss. And to make it easy for you to check what you need, there's a little square before each item. Why, I can shop in advance of the sale with that ad. And order in advance if you like. Your Rexall druggist will gladly lay away your order to be picked up any time during the sale. Now, tell me again, where does this ad appear? In this week's Life, Look, Collier's, and the Coming Farm Journal. Read it, check it, and save. <laughs> There's the death sergeant over there. Yeah. Do this sticking plaster on my head look like Europe? Yeah, Andy. You really look like you beat up in a robbery, all right? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Death Sergeant. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, we'd like to report an assault and battery. Where was it committed? Uh, a few hours ago on top of my partner's head. <laughs> uh, allow me to introduce ourselves. I have been to Claire Stevens and this year suffering victim Brown. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, sir. Pleased to meet you. Uh, we was held up last night at the Silver Slipper nightclub. Robbery, huh? Yeah. Well, I'll have to make out a report. Would you uh, give me the facts? Well, you see, me and Mr. Brown here runs the court check uh, concession over at the Silver Slipper. And uh, I went out for supper last night. And when I come back to the check stand, I noticed there was a Chesterfield coat laying on the floor groaning. And I was about to put it on a hanger when I noticed it was Mr. Brown. That was me, all right. What happened then? Well, I know his day's condition wasn't due to imbibing, because Mr. Brown is a teetotalitarian, you see. <laughs> on top of that, I ain't never heard of a martini that would put a knob on top of your head. You mentioned robbery. What was stolen? Well, uh, while Miss Brown was laying there in a senseless and irresponsible condition, they run off with a $1,500 mink coat. I see. No. Mr. Brown, you were the one that was assaulted. Suppose you let me have your version of the robbery? Uh, yes, uh, well, I was standing there when a gal came out of the nightclub in the evening gown. I noticed she was carrying an orchid in her left hand and a blackjack in her right. <laughs> she sure was cute, though. What happened then? Well, natural, I smiled at her. She asked me if I wanted to smell the orchid, and when I bent over to sniff the thing, she conked me over the head. She hit you on the head? Yeah. At first, I thought that orchid was the strongest I'd ever smell. <laughs> but then I realized that somebody was tampering with my skull. Oh, well, yes, Mr. Sergeant, uh, it was really something. She must have wanged him over the head 20 or 30 times. Good heavens, man, why didn't you defend yourself? I was too busy smelling the orchid. That's the story, Sergeant. Naturally, with me being out to supper, Mr. Brown being unconscious during the whole mess, we ain't responsible for no uh, missing coats or nothing like that. <laughs> well, you're running the check stand. Whether you're responsible for the missing coat is strictly between you and the owner. We can't do anything about that. No, you can't, huh? No. However, if you'll give us a description of this woman, pick her up if she tries to pawn the coat. Now, yes, sir, yes. Sir. We'd appreciate it if you'd comprehend her as soon as possible. <laughs> What is this you say, Andy? You done got the mink coat back? Yes, sir, Amos. The police done recovered it this afternoon in a pawn shop. They give it back to the owner, and me and the kingfish is in the clear. Oh, well, that's wonderful, Andy. But tell me something. Uh, what's happened to the gal that took it? Well, the police is looking for her. They got her description. She five foot two, weighs 112 pounds, got a sweet, gentle voice, and a figure like Venus de Milo. I don't think they're going to find her, though. Oh, uh, you don't? No, I've been looking for a gal like that for ten years, but I ain't had no luck. Uh, Andy, uh, where is the kingfish now? Well, Mr. Hathaway, the owner of the nightclub, is so upset about this whole mess that he's liable to throw us right out of his place. And on top of that, Sapphire and her mama done found out about it, and the kingfish is up there trying to explain it to them now. Oh, 
Oh, holy mackerel. I wouldn't want to be in his shoes for all the money in the world. You know that, ain't that? That's right, George. Me and Mama is taking over that nightclub concession. We're going to run it ourselves. Oh, now, wait a minute here. You can't just step in and do that. Listen here, boob. You say Mr. Hathaway, the nightclub owner, is so mad at you, he's going to throw you out. Well, we intend to protect our investment. Yeah, but listen, me and Ann is in the thing together. You can dissolve our partnership. Listen, son-in-law. You see this fist? Mm, yeah. Well, consider the partnership dissolved. Yes, Mama dear, yes. <laughs> get over how well we're doing here at the check room. Yeah, daughter. And we're going to run this on a business basis, too. That stupid George. When I think of him... Uh, excuse me, I'd like my coat. Oh, certainly. Can I have your check, please? Well, I don't have any check, but it's that camel's hair coat on the second hook there. Oh, it is, is it? You hear that, daughter? Yes, I did, Mama. Listen, Buster, what do you think you're pulling here? I'm not pulling anything. I just like my coat. It's right there on the rack. Now, would you give it to me, please, or will I have to get it myself? Oh, no, you don't. Donna, hand me the lead pipe from under the counter. Hand it, Mama. We're wise to you, you no-good crook. Take this! <laughs> All right, Sapphire, you phone the police. We done caught one of them check room thieves. Hey, Mama, Sapphire, I, uh... Hey, Mama, what's going on here? What's this man doing laying on the floor? Oh, we're on our toes around here, George. This crook tried to get a coat without a check, and I just flattened him. I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Hathaway, the nightclub owner, ain't going to throw us out for the way we're running this cloak room. No, I don't think he is. At least not until you bring him to that crook you just flattened out there is Mr. Hathaway. That's... <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox with a money-saving reminder. Check the four-page ad on Rexall's wonderful one-cent sale in this week's Life, Look, or Collier's, or the coming Farm Journal. Never before so many items. Never before such complete information on them. Think of it, 187 products, 72 of them illustrated, and all of them at two for the price of one, plus a penny. In addition, there are 34 super specials priced so low you won't believe your eyes. Watch for Rexall's one-cent sale ad in this week's Life, Look, Colliers, and the coming Farm Journal. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can rely on your Rexall family druggist. And when you visit him, I wonder if you would be kind enough to do us a favor. Just say to him that Amos and Andy sent you. We'd appreciate it. Thank you, and good night. See you next Sunday. Shop in your own armchair for the Rexall One Cent Sale. Read Rexall's four-page ad in this week's Life, Look, or Collier's, or the coming Farm Journal. Shop from the ad for the Rexall One Cent Sale, October 14th through 17th. Be sure to be with us at the same time next Sunday when your Rexall druggist will again present The Amos and Andy Show, directed by Cliff Howell. Stay tuned for the Bing Crosby program, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.